Amen. And so this morning, uh, Psalm 150 is where we'll be. And the 150th Psalm is interesting, right? Praise, praise the Lord. And it's this big culmination. And if, if you were to go in your, your Bibles and just try to maybe check it out and, and start reading and you read through the Psalms, what you find in Psalms often is, uh, is this, that storms of life form the backdrop of praise to God. Have you been there in life before where you can look back and you can see the storm of the past that you emerged from praising God because he took you through? Have you been there, church? If you read through the Psalms, you'll see this over and over and over and over and over again. And so many of the Psalms are built this way. They're built with some kind of problem in them. You know, think of the famous uh, 23rd Psalm, right? Where, where's the guy walking? Yea, though I walk through where? Yeah. Yeah. The valley of the shadow of death, all together, right? <laughs> and, then, and, and we've been there, and so we know that if we're in the valley of the shadow of death, by the time we get out, what are we doing? Praising God. Because God took us through that valley of the shadow of death, and we thank him because he took us through it, and we've been there in our life, and so we, we know. But, but the 150th Psalm, it's different. There, there's no problem in this one. In the 150th Psalm, we praise God that we might connect with God. And really, the 150th Psalm is almost like this big, extended call to worship. The psalmist is writing to the church, to the, the Israelites, as they sing. He's saying, church, praise the Lord. And they respond something like, hallelujah. Let's try that. Hallelujah. hallelujah. And if you were to go back, in fact, the last, um, last five psalms in the book of Psalm, beginning in Psalm 146, all the way through Psalm 150, they all begin and end with the phrase, hallelujah, or praise the Lord. And you just go, praise the Lord, 146, right? Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, oh my soul, as I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I'll sing praises to God while I have my being. It ends, praise the Lord. Psalm 147, praise the Lord. You get to the end of Psalm 147, praise the Lord. Psalm 148, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him in the, his angels and praise him his hosts. At the end of Psalm 148, praise the Lord. Psalm 149, it begins, praise the Lord. <laughs> it ends, praise the Lord. And then you get to Psalm 150. You know how Psalm 150 begins? How about this? Praise the Lord. <laughs> and so you get this culmination of these Jews that have suffered and they've been uh, pummeled by the nation surrounding and they've been through so many storms and they get to the end of the book of Psalms and it's just this huge culmination of hallelujahs, of praising the Lord. And so the text, um, the text reads like this. And I'm going to ask, uh, usually I just read this to you, but, but can you read this with me today? Um, together, we're going to read all of Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with sounding cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So, it's tough to beat Psalm 150 Amen. as far as praises to God go. And, and as we begin, I want, I want you to see the very first point, maybe the overarching point of the psalm, praise the Lord. It begins with the word hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right? We, we, we talked about this a couple weeks ago, but we need to understand when we say hallelujah or praise the Lord, there, there's three things we're doing. First, we're saying it's a command, not an option. Right? Understand when, when God says, church, praise the Lord, it's not just like when you feel like it. When we praise the Lord, especially if we go through the Psalms and we look at the life of somebody like King David who wrote most of them, a lot of them, when you look at the people that, that are writing the Psalms and they're praising God in the midst of their trials and the midst of their tribulations, it's not, just, it's not just praise the Lord when you feel like it. It's praise God because it's a command to praise God. Amen? Second, it, it's plural. Right? The word hallelujah is, 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 is to praise. And then it's plural. It's everybody. It's like saying all y'all 
Praise the Lord. Use guys, praise the Lord. And so there's this corporate and this individual aspect. When we say, church, praise the Lord, every one of us ought to do what? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Right? And corporately, we ought to praise the Lord. It shouldn't just be one here, one there, or just maybe a couple people in the church. We didn't come to church this morning to watch Pastor Steve praise the Lord. If that's what you're expecting, you're sorely going to be disappointed. We come to church in the morning to praise the Lord together. Amen? Amen. And then third, it's exclusively Christ-focused. And so when you break out that, that word, hallelujah, the, the last, that Yah, is, is the Lord's personal name. It's the abbreviated form of, of the Lord's name that was unspeakable to the Hebrews. Like they, they looked at praise the Lord and they wanted to say God's personal name, but it was so holy. Right? These sinful men and women, they said, we don't think we are worthy enough to vocalize God's name. And so when they said praise the Lord, they said we're just going to abbreviate it with Yah. Instead of saying all of Yahweh, we're just going to say Yah, praise the Lord. In fact, church, let me tell you this morning, if... If you're praising something besides the Lord, it's, it's not real praise. Right? Not, not God praise. Not Christian praise. Not godly biblical. Not, not Psalm 150 praise. Only if it's exclusively Christ focused is it hallelujah for sure. So question. Right? As we go through Psalm 150, we, we answer a lot of questions. The first question, um, who do we praise? Praise the Lord. Right? And, and the question for us then is who am I praising? And, and who's the object of my praise? Who's, who's, where, where, where's my focus in life today? And, and, and I've got three questions for us to answer to help us identify. Just, man, like real life, right? First, what do I think about? Um, Psalm or Proverbs 23, 7 uh, says something like, as a man uh, thinks in his heart, so is he. Right? What, 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 what occupies my mind? Did I, did I come to church and I'm like, you know, God, I really want to praise you, but I'm thinking about pornography. It's not going to work, right? Or, or, or maybe my thoughts are occupied not with like, you know, sexual um, deviance because we're Baptists and we don't do that. <laughs> but it's about my own success and how the American way is to pull myself up by my bootstraps and I'm going to be all that I can be and I am the greatest character of my story and I'm awesome. And if that's my thoughts, right, if, if that's what my, my mind is, is focused on over and over and over, how am I going to say, praise the Lord, when I'm too busy praising myself? You see, first of all, we need to understand, we need to identify, if I'm praising God, what, what am I thinking about? Second, right, if first is my thought life, second is my motivation. What is the motive for what I do? Why do I, why do, I do what I'm doing? Am I motivated by the praise of people? Am I motivated by my finances? Am I motivated by building a bigger kingdom for myself? Um, check this out. Lottie Moon Christmas offering. This is the time of year we'll start really uh, publicizing, getting into this next week. But this is the time of year where we sit and we think, how can we take the gospel to the ends of the earth? At the same time, we're doing Christmas for ourselves, right? For our family. It's a good godly thing to buy and exchange gifts. What I want you to do is think about when I'm giving my gifts, why am I doing that? Blessing my family, that's a good reason. My supporting missions, why am I, why am I giving for Lottie Moon? It's because, it's because there's somebody out there that needs the gospel of Jesus Christ, amen? amen? And if we don't send them, who will? We have, church, look, just American Christians have the wealth that could send missionaries to the uttermost parts of the world. We need to make sure our motives match our actions this season of Christmas. But even as we praise God, what, what, why, why, why do we come to church in the morning? What's the motives for that? Third, uh, if it's not my thought life or my motives, then, then, then who, who am I serving? Whom do I serve or how do I serve the Lord? Do you know that Jesus says we can't serve two masters? Right, because either you'll love the one and hate the other, or you'll hate the one and love the other. You, you, can't, you can't have both. You can't serve, as Jesus says, both God and money, or God and mammon. We can't, we can't have two gods, amen? amen? We must have only one, and Jesus Christ will not share the throne. 
Uh, Joshua 24, 15. Choose this day whom you will serve. You know what's interesting? Joshua goes on and he says, if you don't want to serve God, don't. Right, go back to where you came from. God will not share his glory. When we, when we want to praise God, we have to identify who are we really serving with our praise. Um, I, I made a picture for you guys. I didn't actually, I kind of plagiarized part of it, but this is the object of your praise. It's either Christ or something else. And, and, and the way we, we, we think about this or ought to in our lives is who is on the throne? There's lots of good things in life. Look, don't, don't get me wrong. When we, when we look at the picture with Christ on the throne, all the other stuff is still in your life. You could have your job and your career and your cars and your, 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 your exercise and your, your whatever you want can be in your life, but everything is pointed towards Jesus Christ. Amen. On the other hand, if something besides Christ is on the throne, the, the, the left picture there, that, that's the object of your praise. And, and let me tell you this morning, Jesus will not share the throne. Amen? Jesus says to us, right, all of us, I'm not going to scoot over and like share the throne with your sex, drugs, and rock and roll. I'm not going to scoot over and we're going to be like, co-kings. <laughs> it is Jesus Christ, King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen. Not me. And not you and not anybody or anything else. So just only and solely Jesus Christ. By the way, this morning, if, um, if in your life you, you know this morning with, with certainty that something besides Jesus Christ is sitting on that throne, Today is the day of salvation. Jesus Christ died on that old rugged cross. He bled, suffered, died, was buried, raised again. He's coming back. And through that act on the cross, what he says to each and every one of us is, I can and will save you if you just let me. Here's the promise God makes to us. If you came in this morning, if you came in this morning and you know something besides Jesus Christ is on the throne of your life, Ask Jesus to be the king, and he will. Right? Ask Jesus to save you, to forgive you of your sins, and he will. Tell Jesus Christ this morning, say, God, I, I want Jesus to be king of my life. I'm fully submitting to him today, and he would save you. Second, first, first who do we praise? We praise the Lord. We praise the Lord. Second, um, where do we praise? We praise God two places, in his sanctuary and in the mighty heavens. I, I like the way the text is, it's not complicated, right? We, we praise the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary, praise him in his mighty heavens. And I like the way it's written because these two things are sort of like overarching so that it encompasses every place we could imagine. First of all, we praise God in his sanctuary and we should be thinking um, sanctuary like the temple. As the psalmist wrote, what he's thinking is celebrations with King Jesus. The festivals, the feasts, it's, it's kind of like what we do this morning, y'all. Where we gather together and we praise God. I, uh, I think Revelation chapter 7. And, and I think Revelation chapter 7, if you read there, what you get is this, this, um, this picture of what one day we will be part of. It reads like this, after this I, I looked and behold a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne, before the Lamb, clothed in white robes. You see everybody's been purified by the blood of the Lamb with palm branches in their hands and they're crying with a loud voice. Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures and they fell on their faces before the throne and they worshiped God saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Are you excited to one day praise God in a sanctuary? with all languages, all nations, all tongues, all tribes, all people, all together, praising God, saying, what a blessed God we serve. 
No more pain, no more suffering, no more tears. All things created new. And Jesus Christ solely on the throne. This is praising God in a sanctuary. 100% Christ focused. Second, we praise him in his mighty heavens. And if the heavens are far above the earth, and maybe that's our future place, we're looking towards the mighty heavens as everything else in Psalm 19.1, right? We, we can read Psalm 19.1 that the heavens declare the glory of the, of the Lord. God created to show God's glory. You can cross-reference that with Colossians 1.16, where everything was created by and for Jesus Christ. What do we see that God says, I'm going to create everything so you guys can see my glory. Jesus is the one who creates and holds everything together. So when we look at the world out there, we should be praising the Lord. Amen? And, and by the way, parents, what a great way to teach your kids about God. You see the sunset, son, daughter, God did that for us. You go out to the, the, the mountains or to the, the desert and the field and you say, God, God did this for us. Look at the creativity of God as we look at the animals that he has created for our enjoyment and our care. Praise God in his mighty heavens. Amen? Amen. Praise God for what he's done. Um, I think uh, when we put these two together, the sanctuary and the mighty heavens, what we're saying is we need to praise God everywhere. Amen. And there's, there's something I decided I thought was fun. Praise the Lord, Dr. Seuss style. Do you guys remember that guy from when you were a kid? Some of you we, uh, still maybe read this. You remember the story, right? There's the dude who uh, Sam I Am is trying to say, hey, why, why don't you try some green eggs and ham? And he's like, no way. I don't want it here or there. I don't want it anywhere. And think about ourselves before Jesus Christ. And somebody goes to you and they say, hey, why don't, why don't you praise the Lord today? And what do you say before Jesus? No, I don't want to praise him. I don't want to praise him here. I don't want to praise him. I don't want to praise him anywhere. But when Jesus gets a hold of you and he comes into your heart and he changes you, then you're just like this guy. I praise Jesus. I do. I praise him. Sam, I am. I would praise him in a boat. I would praise him with a goat. I would praise him in the rain, in the dark, and on a train, in a car, and in a tree. He's so, so good to me. Right, so I will praise him in a box. I will praise him with a fox. I will praise him in a house and I will praise him with a mouse. I will praise him here and there. Say, I will praise him anywhere. I do so praise Jesus everywhere. Amen. Amen. I want to praise Jesus no matter where I am or what circumstance I'm in. Listen, I don't know what struggles you're going through today in your life. I don't know what you came out of through Thanksgiving. Look, we talk about Thanksgiving as a joyful, happy time, but sometimes, look, the holidays stink, amen? Or oh me. And we can praise God in a box with a mouse, with a breadcrumb, because our God is glorious, amen? amen. Our God is glorious, and we want to praise him. Um, specifically, though, Point of application, we should come to church ready to praise the Lord corporately as his sanctuary. Do you understand as we talk about praise the Lord in, in the sanctuary, praise him in his high heavens, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, Paul says, you are, you all, you guys, church, you are the sanctuary of the Holy Spirit. You are bought with a price. Your body is not your own, corporately speaking, in that verse, plural, it's all plural. You guys are not your own. You're bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God with your body, with the church. The Holy Spirit's dwelling in you. Church, when we gather together, we should have a focus of praise for Christ Almighty. Amen? Amen. Third, why do we praise God? We praise God for two reasons in Psalm 150, his mighty deeds and his excellent greatness. His mighty deeds and his excellent greatness. Just like, just like it's not difficult to see where we praise him. It's not difficult to see why we praise him. We praise him because of his mighty deeds. Amen? Amen. And we praise him according to his excellent greatness. Amen? Amen. And so, um, here we go. Mighty deeds. Tell somebody what God's done in your life. 
Can you testify that Jesus Christ has done something mighty in your life? Like three of you. Can the rest of you testify that God has done something mighty in your life? Can you think about the mighty deeds of our God and Savior, our King, our Jesus Christ? And if you can, tell somebody about it. Let me make this point that I've tried to make almost every week through Psalms. Our responsibility as parents, grandparents, aunts, and uncles is to share the mighty deeds that God did for me with the next generation. Because here's the deal. If I don't tell them who will, If my kids don't hear from me that Jesus Christ is Lord, that he saved my life, that he pulled me out of the mire, that he is King of kings and Lord of lords, who's going to tell them? And if we don't tell them, you know what's going to happen is Joshua chapter 2, where there arose another generation that did not know the Lord God, that did not know the great and mighty deeds that he had done. And what did they do in Joshua 2? They went and they worshiped the false gods and the Baals and the Astaroth and and, and they they forsook God, right? Let let me tell you, when, when we praise God because of his mighty deeds, we should rejoice and we should think about all of the mighty deeds that God has done for us. We should think about the mighty deeds we've heard that God has done in other people's lives and we should share that with somebody else. There's nothing I like more than hearing testimonies about what what God did or does in different people's lives. Last week when we had uh, Pastor Mitch and and Miss Rose come and share with us, the the reason is because I wanted you all to hear about God's mighty deeds. The reason I tell my kids, hey, you know, like sometimes mom and I, we we have rough times, but God gets us through every time. is because we want our kids to know about God's mighty deeds. When I talk about, hey, you know, my dad was a scoundrel, but I don't have to be, it's because I want my kids to know about God's mighty deeds. And I know that I'm not the only guy in this room that has seen God do some amazing things, amen? What we need to do is be sure we convey those mighty deeds to the next generation. Second, we, uh, we praise God because of his excellent greatness, and we recall his attributes. We just... just When we praise him for his excellent greatness, we're reflecting on the worth of our Savior. Is Jesus worth something to you this morning? You know, you can praise God. You're more precious than gold and silver. You can praise God. God, you're the most valuable thing in my life. You can praise God. God, you keep me going when I don't know how to keep going. God, you're so, so valuable to me. You go through the alphabet. You just talk about, God, you're awesome. You are, what, B, bigger than the boogeyman. Just go through all of them. And and start and, and praise God because of everything that he's done in your life. And then four, express your praise. Make some noise for Jesus, amen? Check out what the the verse says, verses 3, 4, 5. Notice three of the six verses have to do with making noise, musical noise for Jesus, for the Lord. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. (laughs) Baptist, you can dance for Jesus. (laughs) It's a... Even if you can't dance, you can try your best and God will accept it as worship. <laughs> Amen or oh me. Praise him with strings and, and pipe. That's not a smoking pipe, it's a horn. <laughs> Praise him with sounding cymbals and get this, loud clashing cymbals. Right, and, and it goes on. Let everything that has breath, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. The, the, the idea is that when we praise Jesus, we, we make noise for him. You ever notice if you go into a uh, music store, I guess we don't do music stores anymore, it's like Spotify or something. But, but when I was a kid, we would go into Hastings and we'd look and there was this whole like shelf, right? Big shelf of Christian praise music. 
And even if you listen on the radio, it seems like there's a new song praising Jesus every other day, right? Do you ever notice how there's not like Buddhist praise music? They don't have a reason to praise God. We, we have something to praise, and, and it's this jubilant. When, when God gets a hold of your life and he does something for you and you realize that Jesus Christ died on that cross, that I could be absolutely saved, and that now I'm free and I don't have to live with the, the burden or the yoke of the slavery of sin any longer, when you get to that place in your life, you're like, praise the Lord, and we make noise praising Jesus, Amen. This is why Sunday morning we should be loud and proud, Amen. praising Jesus. And we express our praise. Let me uh, remind you just three things that God desires of our praise. First, continual praise. And if you go back in the Psalms, you'll reread this over and over, that, that everything, everywhere, all the time should always be praising God. We praise God as a lifestyle. Praise God as part of who you are, not something to be done. You understand the difference? I live my life to praise God. I didn't just show up in church one morning for half an hour to think I'm gonna praise God and check that box. Second, it's vocal praise. Do you notice, especially in Psalm 150, in 150, everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Not, look, there's no such thing as an undercover brother. No undercover Christians. No, no, like, God, I really want to praise you, but I don't want anybody to know that I'm praising you. I'm praising God. So praise the Lord. And it's God-focused praise. Because if we're, we're exhibiting our praise, we're experiencing praise, we're praising God, we're loud and proud, it's all Christ-focused, which means, right, if I'm doing something that looks like praise, except I am the focus or something besides Jesus Christ is the focus. It's not really praise. And it's not an offering of praise that God will accept. Then five, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This morning, everything that has breath, that's all of us. We're, we're going to praise the Lord together. Um, Let's see if I can get here. Will that, will that go, John, to the next slide? Yes. We're going to get there and we're going to praise God. Yes, here we are. Praise the Lord. Hey, we did this about a month ago, and I thought it was fun to praise God together vocally. And I'm going to ask you to do it with me again. And so... Um, here's what we're going to do. We're, we're coming to our time of response. And what I really want you to get today is... Praise the Lord. Can I get a hallelujah? Hallelujah. And we're going to go through some so slides, and, and what I want you to do is read these with me, and uh, Pastor Barry will join me, and, and Steve will join and, and start playing in just a little while, but I'm going to ask, would you, would you stand with me as we begin to praise the Lord? And there's a lot that we're going to read, but don't let the reading distract you from the message of praising God, right? Everything that has breath Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay, so we ready? Lord, you are abundant provider, Abba, Father, almighty God, alpha, author, and awesome. You are beautiful beyond description, giver of breath, a bulwark never ceasing, compassionate creator, comforter, and conqueror, my dwelling place, defeater of evil and deliverer, eternal, everlasting, excellent Father, faithful, famous, fulfiller, and forgiver. My God, you are glorious. You are the great I am. My good, good Father, your grace is sufficient for me. Lord, you are my helper and my healer, incredible one, inconceivable, infallible judge. Your justice is never ending. Jehovah Jireh, my provider, King of kings and Lord of lords, light of the world. God, 
you are my majestic Messiah, marvelous, magnificent, mighty, and merciful Master. You alone have the name above all names. I praise you, Lord, as the Prince of Peace, protector and provider. You are my omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient God. Your love is overwhelming, perfect in every way. You are the quiet voice in the lonely places, and your quickening spirit produces eternal life in me. Thank you, God, for being reliable, righteous, redeemer my refuge and my sovereign savior satisfier of my soul and strong tower you are trustworthy teacher understanding and unwavering in your love unifier of the saints god you are always victorious and you give us victory you are wise wonderful worthy of all my worship extraordinary and exalted on high yahweh forever i long to be zealous for you my jesus amen and amen praise the lord hey this morning as steve continues to pray to play we're going to take time in prayer i'll be here to pray for you or with you but I want to be sure everybody here today can praise God knowing that He is your Jesus, your Savior, your Comforter, the one who gives you peace with God because He died on the cross. Pray with me, and then we'll have a time to respond. Father God, we thank You that You sent Jesus. We praise You, God, for all of Your wonderful attributes. We praise you that Jesus died for us. He's buried, that he rose again. God, today, Lord, my heart's cry is that every one of us could leave here today praising you, no matter the circumstance. God, praising you for what you've done, for who you are, praising God here and there, praising you everywhere, that we would praise you in a way that is 100% focused on you God that we would praise you with all kinds of musical noises that the world might know we love Jesus it's in his name we pray amen